We've got Scott Abraham talking about Sam Howe, Chase Young, and where's the next stadium going to be here on your 7 July Daily Commanders Update. Let's go. <music> Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Ref the District's Daily Commanders Update here on 7 July Stoner. We are not going to be alone tonight, just like last week. We appreciate all of our guests. And today's is a doozy from ABC7 News and Emmy Award winning sports anchor. This is Scott Abram joining us here on Ref the District. Oh, I'm Scott. a doozy, fellas. I am a doozy. <laughs> Glad to be on the show. Well, we do appreciate you giving us your time here, Scott. There's a lot of things going on for Washington here, even in an, the off season, especially this kind of quiet part. I mean, we've seen here in just like the last week, uh, Terry McLaurin getting recognized as one of the top wide receivers in the NFL. Jahan Dotson getting a lot of love nationally as a person who can potentially explode. And you even got Sam Howell getting love from Dan Overlosky and Mina Kimes. This is kind of a change of pace for Washington fans having the national news kind of praise the things that are happening here in D.C. How does that impact you as our D.C. sports guy when the national news kind of you know shines a, a bright light and this time happy light here on D.C. sports? Yeah, that's the difference, a happy light, because for so many summers, I mean, just look at the last couple of summers of how much doom and gloom and negative headlines, name change, sexual harassment scandals with front office. I mean, it's just been a mess. So uh, it's nice that the focus is on the players, right? And kind of uh, the season ahead and the Terry McLaurins, the Dotsons, the new energy, new look with Eric B It's exciting, you know, especially when those national pundits, um, you know, talk about your team in a positive light, obviously, uh, the wins have to come on the field, but in terms of getting ready for training camp, getting ready for the new season, like the buzz here. You know, you have the new ownership, new offensive coordinator, and Eric Bieniemy. Let's kind of keep the train rolling, right? Yeah, Scott, and and you're uh you're there at training camp quite a bit. We see you uh, out there all the time, putting in your putting in the work and getting the reports out. Are you a howler? Are you? Do you believe in Sam Howell as being the guy who's going to lead this uh, team to success? Stoner, not yet. Uh, Small sample size. Um, The proof is in the pudding. I have to see more from Sam Howell when the lights come on, per se, on Sundays in the fall. Uh, Yes, he played good against Dallas. And, you know, there's an excitement growing with Sam Howell. You know, adding an Eric Biennemi to the offense to put Sam Howell in the best position to succeed with so many different weapons. I got to see more. I I know he's going to get the reps and the looks in training camp. I love to see how he'll do against the Baltimore Ravens in those combined practices, those joint practices they're going to have in August. I hope he gets a lot of reps in the preseason games because let's be honest, it's win now for this coaching staff. If they don't win, unfortunately, probably Ron Rivera and some of this coaching staff is going to be gone because Josh Harris is going to be going into the evaluation phase and going to make his own stamp on this franchise. So yeah, there is pressure on Sam Howell and how long of a leash will he have? Because as I prefaced, they have to win. So if he struggles out of the gate, do you go to Jacoby Brissett? Do you yeah. maybe make that change or do you allow him to grow and to make the mistakes? I think that's going to be a fascinating storyline uh, in the early part of the season, guys. Well, Eric Bainemi was probably the biggest off-season acquisition for the team. We hear he's bringing a lot of fire to these early practices, and he's going to be the one to mold Sam Howell. What, you know, what difference has there been in these practices with Eric Bainemi being there and, and Ron Rivera's kind of interaction with him in the, in the early going? I like the tempo. I like the urgency. I think there's just more of a uh, focus of doing things quickly, doing things right, lining up quickly, putting more onus on the quarterback to be that leader in Sam Howell. Uh, and Eric Bieniemy commands that because he comes from a winning culture uh, previously, obviously, with the Kansas City Chiefs. No, you don't have a Patrick Mahomes. No, you don't have a Travis Kelsey here in Washington. But Eric Bieniemy uh, has had success there. And, and I'll be curious if he can have success in a Washington where you don't have a Mahomes, where you don't have a Kelsey 
two really big foundational pieces of an offense in Kansas City where you kind of have to cultivate your own foundational pieces in this Washington offense. Yes, he's loud. He's energetic. Uh, it's been really interesting to see kind of uh, Ron Rivera just kind of sit back and let Eric run his show and do his thing. So uh, make no mistake, Eric Bieniemy is in charge of this offense, guys. Very good. Uh, and Scott, I want to kind of shift gears a little bit, and I don't want to get too much. I don't want to talk – specifically about that the whole Carson Wentz thing last year but I've always been curious about how how you balance say asking the tough questions because you know as we as fans we always want our guys who represent us the the sports anchors and all that we want to ask the tough questions or we want you guys to ask the tough questions because you guys have the access but then when you do you tend to you might have your access threatened is, is that kind of happened? How do you balance that knowing that you want to ask the tough questions, but maybe you can't because you're worried about not even having the chance next time? Great question. Honestly, I don't care. I mean, I'm doing my job and I'm always going to ask the tough question. Nice. And, and that's just how I've always been. And I'm never afraid to ask those uncomfortable, maybe pointed, maybe direct questions. I've always been like that. And, um, Obviously, the Carson Wentz thing uh, took on a life of its own, um, and that's that's their prerogative, and they have a right to their opinion what they had to say. Uh, I stand by my questions. I stand by my interviews with everybody. And uh, if I'm wrong, I'll say it I'm wrong. But, uh, fellas, I was not wrong in that Carson Wentz situation, and mm -hmm. I'll continue to ask the tough questions. So in terms of having a balance, I mean, I, I really don't see that there is a balance of losing my access or losing – uh, interviews or sit down interviews. I'm going to do my job guys. That's on them. So uh, that this is what I'm paid to do. And um, unfortunately you can't always throw softballs. Nice. Well, well said. there is one player this year that has to answer a lot of tough questions and that's chase young coming back from uh, injury and a kind of really a bad sophomore year and no real third year. What do you expect from Chase Young this year as he tries to get back in, especially with his fifth year option being declined this early on in the off season? I'm not sure to be completely honest, because let's be honest, he has to perform to get paid and stay in Washington. If he doesn't perform, he's probably going to be gone guys. And it worked out for Deron Payne. He bet on himself. He worked his butt off. He had a heck of a year, a career career year, and he earned that money. Chase Young, supposed to be a face of the franchise, supposed to be one of those foundational pieces, as I talked about. Injuries have derailed that great rookie year. Now it's time for him to step up to the plate. I love that defensive line. You can't keep everybody, right? Because Montez Sweat is also going to be a free agent at the end of the season. So, it's either going to be Montez or Chase that's staying. One of them is going to go because I don't think you're going to be able to keep both. You already locked up Payne. You already locked up Jonathan Allen. Let's see which one steps up and, and goes in injury-free. I hope it's Chase. I have a long relationship with Chase going back to his high school days at DeMatha. I've covered him for years. Great family, great young man. And uh, personally, I root for him. But, you know, the proof is in the pudding as I go back to it. You got to perform – uh, in this NFL, because it's, it's a what have you done for me lately business, unfortunately. And there's that business aspect. I don't care how much of a name recognition you have or you're from the area or not. Good college career. If you don't perform on Sundays in the fall, you're not going to be playing. So what would you do, Scott? Let's say you had to make that decision today and you didn't have this whole season to kind of evaluate between the two guys, between Montez and Chase. And you're the GM and yep. you have to decide today. Sign both, sign neither, sign one. Stoner, love the follow-up question. I feel like you can have my job. That's uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's really good. Um, I would probably go Montez, I mean, to, to be honest, because I got to see and trust that leg is okay from Chase Young. You know, he has that brace, and uh, I want to see the motor. I want to see that get off from the line. I want to see uh, the variation of moves to get around the tackle. Montez Sweat, he had a fairly good year last year, and um, he had some pressures and he had some sacks, and I think he can build upon that. So if today, right now, in July, I had to make a decision, I'm, I'm going with Montez Sweat. Yeah, personally, I think that one's a very easy answer given uh, the careers both have had so far. Now, let's 
move away from the players and talk about the field itself. And there's been a lot of buzz with RFK this week. Yeah. What are you hearing and, and what's your general feeling about where Washington might end up in their next stadium? Uh, I'm going to beat the drum until it happens. I think this franchise belongs back in the district at the RFK site. I think um, there's this, that special fabric in history with the fan base. And I just think it would just be a massive home run for the city, for the franchise, and to get a new crown jewel of a stadium it can attract other big events, not just the football game. So I think it belongs in the district. And I think this legislation that is going to get proposed by James Comer could be a game changer and it'll give DC a seat at the table with Maryland and Virginia. As you know, guys in this town, there's a lot of political red tape mm -hmm. uh, here in DC. So you're going to have to go through the DC city council, uh, obviously uh, Congress and then the Senate. So there's a lot of steps before this happens, but this is big progress. And I don't think this type of progress would have been made with Dan Snyder in charge. So this whole ownership change going from Snyder to Josh Harris has opened up the doors again to the district. So we'll see if Josh Harris can punch through and get it back to the RFK site. Yeah, it was only like six months ago when all three uh, jurisdictions yeah. were were out. And now all of a sudden all three of them are, are back in fighting. But speaking of Josh Harris, what do you think is going to be his first big move once he's confirmed as owner? Yeah, I, I don't know if there is good... I don't know if there's going to be a big, big move right away. And I think fans want that in, in a sense, maybe. But from a practical business aspect, I think he's really going to take his time and, and evaluate and, 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 and lean on maybe a Jason Wright to, to kind of give him the inside info of what re what's really going on and the key people that are in place right now. And he's going to make his decisions as the season goes on and probably January, February. Again, that is my opinion. In terms of a new name or a new mascot or a new team, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be Washington Commanders. I don't think he's going to touch that because there are bigger fish to fry. Biggest thing, in my opinion, outside of wins and losses, figure out where is this stadium going to go. Lock it down. Get a future Put some groundwork down. Is it going to be Maryland, Virginia, D.C.? Figure that out. I think that's going to be a big priority. And obviously, he's going to evaluate uh, the coaching staff and, and, the, and the player personnel along the way. But in terms of a big move right away, I don't think there's going to be a massive move uh, because he's been – this isn't his first rodeo. He owns plenty of other teams, the New Jersey Devils, the Philadelphia 76ers, I think he knows what he's doing. He's going to surround himself with people he trusts and believes in. Uh, and uh, we'll see where it goes. That we will. Any big moves, we know that Scott Abraham will have it on ABC's 7 News. Or you can catch it right here on Ref the District every weekday at 730. Scott, we appreciate you jumping on here with us on our Daily Commanders update. Hopefully we can have you back again during the season. And uh, until next time. I love it. Appreciate it, guys. I'll always be a doozy. Don't forget it. Be a fan.